You're listening to Fighting Game Volley. It's the number one podcast for low-level player opinions. Yeah, that makes sense. Round one. Hello, hello, hello to all my masters, grapplers, set play psychopaths, Wi-Fi warriors, old tourists, tournament organizers, everybody that's playing fighting games. Welcome back. We back at it again. Another episode of the Fighting Game Follies. I don't even know what episode it is. I just know it's going to be a good one because, like always, I just feel like I'm now sort of like turning into a uh, news podcast. But as always, because fighting games are in such an amazing spot, we keep getting more news every week. We get into something new. And since I missed. Technically two weeks. I'm probably gonna try and hit y'all with a double upload since things got a tiny bit hectic I got caught up with some stuff, but oh well, that's on me But we got news. We got a lot of news especially since summer games fest happened So on my persona atlas sega fans we're eating incredibly well, but that's besides the point We got stuff to talk about we got some things about Tekken 8 we got some things about Mortal Kombat we don't have anything for Street Fighter but because I wanted to like talk and sort of mingle in Street Fighter somewhere uh because I was initially going to make a full episode on it but then I didn't want to make a full episode on it because I didn't know everything that I wanted to talk about but we'll we'll figure that out later on just right now uh we we have a, a lot of good things to talk about a lot of like specifically Tekken 8 and Mortal Kombat which I'm kind of hyped for, especially since Tekken 8, like, ooh, we, we got, it's not news in the sense of, like, things being revealed, but more news and, like, just, you'll, stay tuned. So, yeah, with all that uh, being said, please sit back, relax, do whatever you're doing. If you're working on homework, I promise you the answer is C. Uh, and, yeah, uh, just allow me to, like, ramble on about any fighting game stuff that I can right now. And right now, what we are currently talking about is the thing that I kind of don't care about a whole lot, but at the same time do kind of care about now since we got gameplay footage, that being Mortal Kombat 1. Now, I already knew from the start, like, from the trailer, Mortal Kombat 1 was going to be looking, like, inc- exceptionally well, since the trailers normally reflect how the gameplay is actually going to look. So, and I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I did also mention that Mortal Kombat 1 was going to be looking damn good. So, I'm glad that I was at least, like, right on that. I looked through the very clear jar and saw that, like, it was going to look good, and I was like, hey, it's probably going to look good. But... We got gameplay trailers. We got we got gameplay footage. We got a lot of stuff. We got some info on the cameo system. Uh, we just got a lot of things on it. Uh, it, and I'm here to like give my two cents on it. And right now, what my two cents is is honestly, I'm partly not necessarily indifferent towards it. I'm just sort of confused on what my overall like take on everything is, cause. First off, the game, let me just say, first off, the game looks, like, very fast-paced. Like, it's way more fat. like, and this is sort of the things that I sort of like about uh, Mortal Kombat specifically. Like, I feel like it's slowly starting to pick up in terms of, like, combat pace and speed and everything. Because, like, to me at least, and this is probably just because, like, how quickly games, like, move forward and stuff. But, like, uh, to give an example, given the jump from, like, say smash 4 to smash ultimate i try and go back to playing smash 4 that game looks like a slug fest and then like to top it all off with like brawl on top of that it just looks super like i'm playing in like 25 percent speed but mortal kombat 1 very fast paced looking game uh i'm looking at the gameplay trailer right now or like the gameplay debut trailer uh characters got new normals because obviously you know a lot of things about characters were changed up in the sense um like for example sub yeah sub-zero who is now officially related to a scorpion which you know yippee cool but now he has like a skull that he uses in like his normals it might be a special move it might be a normal uh we don't really know yet uh kung lao or not kung lao uh whatever bro's name with the hat is forgive me i have not looked at this series in like four years since I played X, so I don't really remember, like, uh, a bunch of character names. I only know, like, the, the main, main, like, four. But, uh, bro, dude with the hat, right? No longer has, like, the hat as the main weapon. Uh, I thought he was going to, like, probably use the chakram that he, like, threw at him, but I guess not. Uh, now the hat's just a, it's a hat. It's an accessory. So, yippee. 
Um, still has the, like, turbulent wind power stuff, though, which is actually really cool. You can see, like, a super elaborate, like, dive combo, um, that's done off of, like, a launcher, which is, like, honestly really sick. And it just goes to show how, like, elaborate the combo system could potentially be, which is really, like, there's a lot more air play in it which i think is probably not necessarily one of the things mortal kombat was lacking per se but like that's one of the aspects where i feel like it probably could have been explored a tiny bit more but with mk being a very grounded well grounded in the sense of like i guess footsies base it, it's very like grounded with punish oh if you make a mistake i'm gonna capitalize on it capitalize with a capital c so just introducing like a new like sort of airplay to it is very uh i guess kind of interesting because now i'm like in i'm wondering like how or what the air options are going to be for characters and everything since it seems like everybody has some sort of launcher if they don't have a launcher then their assist probably ha or excuse me their cameo probably has a launcher but as it stands right now since we are still very much like in the dark in terms of what the uh gameplay and everything like all of the tools that we have uh i really can't say for certain obviously sub-zero combo looks cool like uh everything just looks really cool move over to the next fight this is actually with like both of my mains from x so i was actually really quickly or i'm not even really quickly i was just like paying attention to this a lot i was a big kenshi player i was a big johnny cage player um i'm kind of sad to see that they took away like the energy stuff that they gave johnny and x and i think 11 i really don't remember but i'm kind of sad to see that they took away like his like energy projection stuff because i thought that was really cool and it also gave him a couple of options or like it gave him stuff to play around with the rest of the cast and made him more rounded um so yeah I, i'm i'm also just like not really a fan of how he looks i guess because like bro he does not look like Johnny Cage. He looks like Mike Box, and I hate it so much. Uh, it, it's goofy looking. Or not goofy looking per se, but like, it's just very, I'm not used to it. Because when I think Johnny Cage, I'm thinking sleazebag. I'm thinking like Hollywood garbage. And this dude is relatively clean thumb. I'm not even gonna, like, I'm not gonna lie. Bro is relatively clean, lives in a nice crib, everything. Kenshi is way cleaner than I initially, like, if you look at, like, how Kenshi looked in Mortal Kombat X, as opposed to, uh, like, now, he is very much, like, they got, they got rid of the beard, they got rid of the whole, the whole, like, the whole beard, uh, I get, I can live with it, but, like, I'm just, I'm not really a fan of, like, the super clean shaven face that he has. And also, something interesting that we actually see off of this is that now the cameos, which we know are going to, I think Edmund said, or someone said that the cameos are going to have the more classical looks, while the uh, new ones, obviously, they're going to have their, like, regular dated looks. But uh, the cameos now actually, like, tag team x-ray combos, which, uh, that's kind of cool. Like, I think that's uh, kind of interesting. I'm kind of sad, though, because it takes away, like, the whole, um, oh, every character has a unique x-ray. It's probably just going to be, like, oh, one character has a x-ray, like, starter move that they do, and then one character has, like, an x-ray finisher move. That's, like, and that's probably, like, the way that you mix and match them. Like, you have part A, part B for each character, and then, or whoever you team it up with, probably the point character does, like, part or the cameo does like part A and then the point does like part B. But well, I digress. It's still cool nonetheless. If not like a tiny bit. Like I, I don't want to say like oh it's cool nonetheless and then immediately call it lame. But I'm just kind of sad that like there's no. Depending on how it looks. Or depending on like how it's actually dealt with. I'm just sort of sad that there's not going to be like a big big individuality. Or individualistic part to the x-rays. Because... With this Kenshi one, obviously we see that he uses the Spear Ghost. We like we see that um, Sub Zero uses like the icicles and everything. But I feel like what the Mortal Kombat X X rays do really well is the fact that they very much leaned in to 
the character traits a lot more and then this one is just a very basic oh okay cool i'm just gonna do like do something very generic with my powers and then that's the x-ray like initially when i saw this like little like cross section thing that can like this cross section like slash uh that kenshi does i was like yo this is just ghost blade from um i almost said grand blue from dnf duel and i started laughing because i was like yo it really is just ghost blade from dnf duel but i don't know hopefully what i'm saying isn't right and it's not gonna be um like just a very like copy paste a copy paste b and then that's how the x-rays are done because that would be kind of like lame but still i get whatever we get whatever we get um we do get a singular or actually no we don't we get sort of like a solo interaction thing from johnny cage unless this is supposed to be like a story beat because as we can see in the trailer like he immediately kenshi immediately loses that fight which l kenshi come on bro um we also do see him back at the monastery on top of that as well and then we also see a lot of kung lao like actually let me not like skip ahead here because from the looks of it or if we assume that like every like um base character that is always in mortal kombat is also going to be in the main roster which we pr i'm pretty sure is what's going to happen uh that's one two three sub-zero scorpion Jax, uh johnny cage kenshi uh raiden who's also makes an appearance still has his lightning powers which is cool i think sonya and kano make an appearance as well if i'm not mistaken right am i oh yeah uh so or not sonya but katana molina yup they're still here um i know that Jax does makes or he does or Jax makes an appearance and then where's kano because he also makes an appearance on top of that but if we assume like all of those characters are going to be in then cool and we can also see or i guess not see but i don't know just at the end because I'm, I'm skipping like super far ahead for this video um it seems like they yeah nah what i it seems like what i said about like the x-ray things is still like or that's what seems to be the case um man i don't know just oh yeah breakaways too i totally forgot they also do have breakaways which is pretty cool but yeah what i said about the x-ray thing probably being like an uh part a part b thing seems to be true um which kind of blows but oh well uh i guess i'll live with it i am kind of glad though that they are still keeping um like character fatalities to be like singular and like they're still all the more bloody and gory which very cool honestly this oh this rating one is kind of sick but oh well i i guess we'll just have to like sort of see what like comes about in the game itself when it eventually comes out on september 19th of this year and obviously you know if you pre-order get sing Sung beta access yada 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 i've been over it already um so yeah so far mortal kombat it, it looks interesting it looks pretty cool i guess we can sort of just wait and see uh like what people think of the beta for those who pre-order it on um, what people like actually you know think and when they play the game because you know like i said some people like rofo monger i don't know if any others have gotten the chance to play it yet but um some other people like rofo monger and like a few others i probably have to like scout around and look for it um have gotten the chance to play the game and obviously they've made videos on it i'll link the rofo monger video i'll link the uh mortal kombat 1 official gameplay debut trailer so you guys can all watch that and like you know just let me know what you all think in the description and everything comments tweet at me like on socials you guys have all of that i'll do it like later on at the end but overall thoughts mortal kombat uh, it looks good like it, it does look good 
I'm still not, or I'm still sort of on the fence on if I do want to devote time into playing this because, you know, with Street Fighter 6 and me also just randomly like, hey, I'm gonna start playing Chrono Phantasma, like, again. So I now have to, like, learn the game. And with me essentially just, like, not being, like, the biggest fan of Mortal Kombat, especially after what happened with Eleven, um, I, I'm sort of on the fence on if I do want to get this or not. I'll probably make, like, a more definitive answer, like, when the time, like, rolls around and we get more info on it, but maybe I get, uh, Mortal Kombat 8, or, whoa, 8, maybe I get 10, uh, maybe not, who knows. I will know, I will, however, always be talking about it and, like, talk about all of the very important things that come out, so, yeah, be on the lookout for anything that, or be on the lookout for when I do eventually talk about it, it might get its own episode, it might not, who knows, just know that I will be here to talk about any substantial news that comes from it. Round 2! Next up on the chop and block, we have something that I actually am really interested to, like, get my grubby little hands on, however I probably won't for a good while, because, if you guys haven't heard the news, obviously that's why I'm here, Tekken 8 is having a closed network test, so... Uh, that's actually really, really, really important. It's basically just a stress test, something similar to the Mortal Kombat closed network test that they're going to be having later on in this year, where uh, it's specifically just going to be something to test out the network and everything, see how that does. Nothing really too crazy, however, the good thing about this is that this will actually be the first time that we get our, like, the public's hands on, you know, Tekken 8, and we'll be able to, like, try it. And I'll leave the um, sign-up code and everything down in the description. You guys know me. Yes, I have already signed up for it. Uh, Bandai, please, please, Bandai, please do not hold me over like how Capcom did. And, like, I, I really want to try this out. And I really do want to test this and, like, actually play the game. Because I am really interested. Like, I am most likely going to buy Tekken 8 when it eventually does come out. Whenever it does come out, probably sometime in 2024. But... I really, really, really want to play this game now so that I can just, like, start getting a feel for it and, like, understanding, like, what exactly I'm going to be getting myself into. Because I don't know if you guys remember or I don't know if I've said it a whole lot on the podcast, but I'm not the biggest fan of 3D fighters and I got, like, very late into Tekken 7. Like, I started playing Lucky Chloe and Eliza. So I'm not, I don't really know what's, like, going on. And I'm also not really hyped per se about this whole like specific uh oh you only rush down like sort of weird drive mechanic thing i think i forget what it's called but like they're like they're game specific mechanic that they're having in tekken 8 i'm not necessarily that big of a fan of it as i feel like it's way too like aggression oriented and there isn't any way for the defender to do something about that but i mean tekken is a very aggressive game so i guess it makes sense but like I've said numerous times before, I feel like it's just sort of like a snowball mechanic of like, oh, all it really takes is one really good like uh, read, combo, string, whatever, and then the round is essentially yours. But with the closed network test, we might be able to actually, uh, you know, get my hands, see what I'm like actually talking about, see if what I'm talking about is true or not, and then actually get like a understanding on the system mechanics and, you know, just other Tekken 8 stuff, which... Just going off of it, like, all of the, like, Tekken 8 stuff that we have gotten so far, like, all of the character announcements, the character reveals and everything, are really, really good. And I haven't, like, gone on to talk about the character-specific uh, reveal trailers in a while. And that's partly, in fact, because we haven't gotten, like, all too, too many. I know we got, like, Brian Fury, uh, we got Harong, we got uh, Lily a while back, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But... All of the stuff that we have been given is really good. And I also, just like as a little like nod, I guess, I really like the character specific, um, what is it called? Like the interaction stuff that they do at the start of the game if they have history. Obviously, you know, Kazuya, Jin, uh, Lily, and what's Kazuya's cousin's name? Uh, it, it escapes me ever so. But, um, like Haran, Jin, uh, like, it's a lot of like Jin stuff, really. But, I just like all of the character, like, interactive stuff, especially since, uh, as someone who recently, or not recently, but, like, a while back, I did a little deep dive on, like, Tekken lore and everything, uh, I'm, I'm just sort of, I like seeing, like, 
characters interact like before and after the fight and then say like specific stuff because i think it's cool and i think it's fun and i feel like that's a neat little way to world build and then do uh cooler things outside of just like fighting or a story mode or something it's something that i think street fighter 6 also does like very well on top of that especially in the actual arcade and story mode but we'll talk about that like later when i have a lot more things to say about street fighter 6 but it's sort of all that there is to it to the uh Tekken 8 news it's not anything like super substantial or super crazy it's just like you know something to look out for and keep in mind uh if i can uh, let me actually look this up when the date for the closed network test is because i don't remember or i yeah closed network test da 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 da, da. all right July 21st, 2023 at 1 a.m. to July 24th, 2023 at 12 a.m. So be on the lookout for that. Obviously, you already know. Once again, please, 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 please. I just, I need to, I need to try this out. I need to, actually, no. Because, do, 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 I screwed up. There is going to be a PlayStation 5 specific early access closed beta or closed network test, excuse me, that's going to be happening on the dates that I just listed. And then there's going to be a, like, uh, I almost said console. There's going to be, like, an, not an open closed network test, but, like, it's going to be open to all other platforms, P PS5, Xbox Series X, Steam, etc., etc. That's July 28th to July 31st. So, end of July is looking to be like a really good month for Tekken right now, uh, which is actually really sick. Like I said, I'm signed up for that. So, be on the lookout for that. All, be on the lookout for just all of the Tekken 8 news and everything that's going to be coming soon. Because when I say this game is this game is looking good, this game looks good. And I really am uh, like excited to get my hands and actually try this. So, also, looking at the website now, they did not update this, like, with all of the rest of the stuff that they've dropped recently, but oh well, who cares. So, yeah, I'm excited for uh, more Tekken 8 stuff, hopefully we get something, I was expecting we get something at, like, Combo Breaker, but uh, I guess not, and I think the only other tournament that we have uh, left is CEO, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, when does CEO, like, actually happen? Because I might, I might be talking crazy. No, it, all right, yeah, yeah, I was right. It does actually, June 23rd to the 25th. Okay, yeah. So, maybe we might get some CEO stuff that happens. Uh, oh, yeah, that's actually coming up in a week. Um, so, yeah, I guess you guys will be able to check out what my thoughts are on CEO next week when I eventually talk about that. But, yeah, just be on the, maybe we might get some, uh, news on, like, maybe we do get some Tekken 8 news, uh, at CEO, I kind of doubt it, uh, I know that, I think this is the last, like, major tournament before EVO, so that's actually kind of sick, uh, maybe we do get something, maybe we don't, if not, we have EVO to look forward to, because I know a lot of people are going to be dropping news over at EVO, and I seriously cannot wait for that, so, be on the lookout for any Tekken 8 news that you find. I'm most definitely going to be on the lookout for it because this game looks way too good to just pass under the rug. And I'm most definitely going to try and get my hands on it when, you know, it eventually comes out and maybe try and play it. Uh, or, or, like, actually try and, like, study it. But, you know, I'm too busy studying Street Fighter 6 and, like, trying to work in the ins and outs of that game. Which, man, it, it essentially feels like I need to have a whole scholarship just to play it. But I'll talk to that, or I'll talk about that now. Because I actually do want to talk about Street Fighter 6. And uh, at the time of this recording, it's been about, like, two weeks. So let's actually start talking about Street Fighter 6. Round 3! Alright, so now that we're done talking about Tekken, we're done talking about Mortal Kombat, we can now actually talk about the big stepper in the room, Street Fighter 6. And, uh, before I even, like, start, I'm gonna talk a tiny bit on, like, how just, like, my experience on the game has been, and then just, like, what the future hopefully holds. That, like, man, 
this game is fun. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. This game is a lot of fun. It obviously is challenging because that's what all fighting games are. It's a challenging experience, but that the journey, like not no no journey, no answer, no Persona Three, but just the journey to like get better and like try and improve like day by day. It's something that I really do enjoy, and I feel like Street Fighter Six has probably been like the best at giving me that like challenge and challenging everything that I try and like do. And I, I, I really can't put it into words just how like the fun that I'm having playing this game. And I can't really like speak all too too much because I did take a tiny bit of a break from it since I did like grind it nonstop for like the first week. So. I've been, like, playing on and off, like, this week, but still, like, know that I'm very much, like, trying to be better at the game, like, every day, and I see all of the stuff that's, like, being posted on Twitter and everything, I see everybody complain about, like, um, modern control Zangief because one button SPD is in, like, 720s and yada yada, whatever, and there there's a lot of stuff that's like i guess not necessarily a controversy per se but like a lot of people are very much annoyed at like modern control like charge characters because they're sort of seen as like easier since you don't have to really think about the whole charge and everything which makes sense as someone who's like i don't want to say pl uh plays a charge character because i just got into like guile recently and like he's kind of fun but like guile is very much easier in this game as opposed to like uh you know street fighter 5 or 4 or whatever but as someone who sort of like is playing or like learning guile a tiny bit i do kind of understand why people think that uh the charge input thing is like very much easier for someone who's playing on modern controls versus someone who's playing on classic but i do have to or i feel like it is good to keep in mind that like modern control players do miss out on a good bit of the uh, obviously the rest of their moveset they lose out on a lot of like sometimes not good sometimes really good tools because modern controls obviously can't hold everything that classic controls has which sort of like falls into the balance of oh if i play classic controls obviously i get everything but it's a slightly harder control scheme as opposed to modern controls where it's way easier but i don't get as many you know tools to work with or like play around with because obviously like just to use guile for example i think uh guile charge or not like you know in classic controls if you like have charge you throw a sonic boom uh i can mess around with the timing of each sonic boom i can ex it to make it stupid fast etc etc but with modern controls i think i only have medium sonic boom and that's the only thing that i have so i can't really make a game plan like entirely around that yes it is way easier to punish you if you try and jump for or jump around my sonic boom because i can just like two button flash kick down button and then boom that's it but i still do think there is sort of like a dichotomy there's a balance to it like everything no nah, i'm not gonna say it's like equally balanced as all things should be but there is very much a balance trying to like go to it and i think there was an attempt made by capcom to like try and balance it so uh you know i think it's good i, I think it's solid um stemming away from gameplay a tiny bit just like i i've said it before i've said it a uh, second time i will say it again presentation this game's presentation downright beautiful gorgeous everything about it from like just the ui how the ui interacts with everything else how like all of the nice pretty colors like it's just everything about this game how it looks how it like feels how it sounds everything about it is just like downright amazing especially in the music category and i again i've said this before i'll say it again i'm a big street fighter 3 fan i feel like that game's like hit that game's iteration of the hip-hop aesthetic versus this game's iteration of like the hip-hop aesthetic and how it does its thing even though like you can tell it is still very much pulling from the same like core aspects and ideas the way that they do it is all very like different and very unique from each other yet still housing the same uh core aspects and ideas because this game obviously it focuses a lot more like into the graffiti aesthetic of like 
yeah, it just fits more into the graffiti aesthetic, which I feel like is both a combination of what Street Fighter, you know, 4 and 5 were doing versus, you know, Street Fighter 3, as if you look at the... Or if you look at like the pattern of Street Fighter games, you can see that there is a core aesthetic in terms of like the art style that it's pulling inspiration from. So for example, Street Fighter 4 had a very oily, I guess, or not oily, but it had like an old like paint style to it. Like it had an old uh, Japanese paint style to it in like the ways that it did its like focus attacks and everything and like how that game's presentation and UI was made up as opposed to Street Fighter V how it has I guess more of an oil paint setting and then it also sort of tried to do that realistic thing which didn't really work street fighter 6 pulls it back a tiny bit you know gets us back into the realm of painting but more into a street art style painting and then you know street fighter 3 it doesn't or like 3 2 it doesn't have a sort of aesthetic like that because you know back in the day there wasn't really a way to establish something as complex of a concept as you know like ui designing and things like that but even then those games weren't really made to have a ui like that specifically street fighter 2 but the way that this game presents itself the way that it carries out that core idea of you know streets get out on the streets um and just like you know everything that it is doing to hold that like core concept and everything it's doing a magnificent job at it and i feel like all of the ui designers and everybody did a like phenomenal job at it you can hear it in all of the like character themes you can hear it throughout like all of the stage themes and it's just done a really good job and just like going off of like character themes a tiny bit i do like all of the little like in baked like references and everything that's like all really like sick and i think it's all really cool like for example uh kimberly's theme kimberly you know the uh ninja like 80s like hip-hop chick who you know trained under the bushin ryu style of like ninja arts which uh, keep in mind is also where guy from final fight and also you know he made an appearance in street fighter uh, he also trained under that style. I think, if I'm not mistaken, he was the one that actually trained Kimberly. So, you know, they have, like, the same similar moves and everything, similar in execution and whatnot. But if you take a look at Kimberly's theme, you can hear in certain parts that she also pulls from Guy's theme, which Guy's theme also pulls from something from Final Fight. So it's, like, a little way to, like, there, there are little, like, ways to tie into um, characters' past and everything. And I think that's you know something that's done very well i know like series like guilty gear it does it a lot not necessarily in that way but like how for example strive does it in it's like vocal themed uh character tracks and everything and i i just find like little like easter egg big stuff like that uh very just very cool because it adds like layers to or it adds layers for people like me who like like to go in and like delve deeper into the games itself and then it's like oh hey here's a nice little like treat a little like nugget to because you actually paid attention to all of the story stuff and just didn't play the game obviously a competitive player or a competitive player isn't going to care all too much about like all of the little oh how does this character like evolve as you know their care or their story has evolved because obviously they don't care about any of that really but or their focal focus isn't about that it's about being good at the game so it sort of just is like little treats and stuff for uh players like me to just you know delve in and like really enjoy like the tinier more minute details of the game's world and like the world building and everything and that's another thing like just the overall world building and just like the world itself you know taking a tiny look at like world tour mode uh i think world tour mode is probably the best thing or like the best like iteration of single player content that fighting games have had in a good while i think like the only other like really decent thing that i can think of off the top of my head is like the crypts from mortal kombat like 10 but this game's solo like the world tour mode is just phenomenal like and yes before you ask i do have another episode of my world tour series like coming so be on the lookout for that but i just think world tour mode is probably like it's so much fun dude like all of the every everything just every i can't there are so many things that i like i 
I have like I just want to talk about but I don't know how to formulate it in a way that's not going to make me sound like insane or crazy without like having to pull from something else but just world tour mode is a phenomenal experience in this game that was made to like not obviously not like it's not only for world tour mode but i feel like this is probably the best game that could have done something for world tour mode and you can see that with like uh for example alex lee the guy that voices luke like he he was having a blast playing it and like i i guess that's sort of cheating because you know he did partly have a hand in like bringing the game to life but you can just see it in like all of the jokes and everything that he made in his video which yes i'll link in the description below don't worry please go check out alex lee's like stuff it's all really good uh i still think it's kind of funny how he's gonna be the one to voice uh makoto yuki in persona 3 reload i think that's crazy because this dude has just been hitting banger after banger like rolls and like getting his foot into the door like everywhere which i think is kind of crazy but um just uh, everything like about this game is just it's phenomenal and i really do think like if you don't have the chance to or if you don't have the capabilities to play street fighter 6 now like you have to play it like in your lifetime i feel like this is probably gonna be the next street fighter 2 turbo or like just street fighter 2 in general because that game had such a cultural impact on just fighting games in general it's essentially what birthed the series to be like you know how it is now and i feel like street fighter 6 is probably going to be like the modern iteration of street fighter 2 because the amount of like just ideas and everything that is going to be pulled from this game from system mechanics like the like drive system how that interacts with everything else to like characters story like gameplay whatever like however you want to pull from it i feel like so many people are going to pull so many concepts ideas unused things that like didn't make the cut it's i feel like it's gonna be used somewhere else and i i just really can't wait i'm so glad i can like be alive today and then like hopefully in the future so that i can like see how that grows and then i know it's crazy talking about like a street fighter 7 now and like i i'm not saying it because i'm like ungrateful to street fighter 6 or anything like i am very much fine with having this game for like the next decade and a half believe me but just seeing how this game is such a departure from street fighter uh 5 and like how rocky and just like abysmal that game was at the start as opposed to like now and how like just beautiful like it's just like it's so elegant and i just can't put it into like words like correctly but just like compared street you compare street fighter 5's launch to street fighter 6's it doesn't look like it's the same game series like it shouldn't it doesn't look like it's from the same game series because that game had a horrendous like starting launch and it was like just really bad at the start and then as opposed to now i feel like this game is probably like in i know not even probably i feel like street fighter 6 is in a really solid spot right now obviously there's a bit of stupid jargon or like just a bunch of stupid stuff and everything like baloney that's happening right now but as opposed to like how other games like how just other fighting games in general have been at launch with them being like either super like stupid and just like busted or like a specific character being like just completely overtuned or undertuned to where they're not usable as opposed to now how like every character has something to i guess sort of like keep them in the not necessarily higher echelons but like it's sort of I guess the issue or not issue per se it's sort of like the like effect in like guilty gear to like uh to compare it to something that i know where like back at launch i felt like every character was like pretty solid and could, could test with everybody else obviously there were some like stronger than ev uh, others don't get me wrong but i feel like every character here has like something to warrant them being like oh hey we can put them in a tier no we can put them like no character truly feels underpowered or like completely underpowered to the point of them being like unplayable and uh, which i think is like if you can do something like that and then still not force but like still have players like make 
choices of like, oh, I want to play this character as opposed to the other character because uh, I like how their tools are as opposed to like one other character, then I think you've probably succeeded at game balance. And I feel like that's ultimately what game balance should be. Obviously, make the game balance so that you can uh, still have it be competitively viable, but also still leave player choice and like player object or leave player objectivity to the side as like, oh, you know, there's a top strategy and I have to play this character as opposed to like, oh, I want to play this character because the tools that they have are good in this matchup. And even if they're not, I still want to play them because I'm like a character specialist or they fit more in line towards me. But I just feel like Street Fighter 6 is like, it's it's done a really good job. I feel like it's done an amazing job at like doing this. And I honestly cannot wait to see what it has in store. Hopefully we do get to see more of that soon because, you know, we did say, or they did say that Rashid was going to be coming in the summer of this year. So, you know, first DLC character very soon. Obviously, I'll, you know, be on the lookout for that when that eventually drops. So, don't worry. Your boy will be here. I'll be talking about it. I'll be talking about Street Fighter 6. To the end of time, Street Fighter 6, 100 years, 100 years, 100 years, 100 patches of Street Fighter 6. But, I think I'll end it at that. Uh, I think I'll end today's episode of the Fighting Game Follies at that. Um, please, you know, follow follow the socials, follow the podcast, uh, follow the YouTube channel, everything that I say, like, at the end of all of the other episodes. I honestly forgot at this point. Um, thank you all so much for tuning into this episode. I really do appreciate it, and I really do love you for sticking around and, like, just listening to me ramble on to a bunch of garbage that, like, is probably, like, not gonna matter, like, when the heat death of the universe happens, or yeah, whatever. I don't care. I want to have fun playing my stupid little video games and, like, having fun and doing other stuff that I don't have to worry about. And hopefully, like, I can impart this on to the newer generation. Ah, Street Fighter 3 callback, baby, because I love Street Fighter 3. Best fighting game ever. But, yeah, uh, thank you so much for tuning in once again. I really do appreciate it. Um, Like, yeah, just be sure to look out for the next episode of the Fighting Game Follies. Uh, whenever that drops, it should drop next week because CEO is dropping next week. So, yes, I will be talking about CEO. Um, So, be on the lookout for that. Yo! Um, and yeah, this is your host, Scrooge Games, the Skyward Games at PNG, whatever I'm being called for this week, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Take care, be sure to play some fighting games, and hit the lab now, because you need to clean up your inputs. Uh, I also need to clean up my inputs. My inputs are, like, hot garbagio. Um, but yeah, hit the lab, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.